hello everyone so welcome back to our second video of this two part series of pose estimation previous part we have discussed about the introduction of pose estimation and we have discussed disadvantages advantages and what are the challenges it came to solve this type of problem we also discussed one paper which came around 2014 called deep pose which try to apply deep learning to solve human pose estimation so in this video part we will discuss about open pose so as we know like there are two type of approaches which we can use to solve this problem one is the bottom up approach another is the top down approach so top down approach we first have to identify the people and then we will crop that and then we will passing to find the 18 different key points on their human body but in bottom up approach we first detect the parts so first we will detect all the key points on each and every human being in the picture then we will assign those to distinct individuals so in the bottom up approach there is one more challenge which called multi person post occlusion so that means we have to identify like which part are belong to which human so that we have to do in our post processing so let's get started so first we need to know like what is the part and what is the pair so part is a human body part which is a element of the body so it can be your neck left shoulder right shoulder hip so these are different 18 parts which we have to estimate and what are the pairs so pairs are the couple of the parts so a connection between neck to the left shoulder and a connection between neck to the right shoulder are two different pairs so pair are the combination of two parts let's go further so this is the architecture for the open pose so for the input we are getting a image of 224 by 224 into 3 so it's a rgb image and first we will apply the feature extraction layer so which is a vgg 19 backbone so which will use to extract the features from the image then we will split our next part of the network into two parts and these two branches will predict two different things so first branch will predict a set of 18 confidence maps so with each one will give you which particular part we are trying to estimate so we know that we are trying to estimate 18 different points on the human body we will get 18 different maps representing each different part on that human body and second branch will give you the 38 different output which represent the degree of association so this will give you like which of those two parts can be combined to give you a pair first branch of the model will give you the estimation about the parts and second branch will give you the estimation about which two parts we can use to create a pair so as we know like we will getting a input of 224 by 224 into 3 we will apply the vgg to get the features then we will use those features to pass into two branches in the further network layers in the last we will get 224 by 224 in 57 dimension output tensor these 224 into 224 into 18 first will give you the confidence map and next 38 will give you the paths which is a part affinity fields which will give you the directions and the last one output tensor will give you the background there are two branches will giving the two different outputs so first branch which is a part confidence maps it is giving you the heat maps so this heat map is telling you like where the different part of the body is in single dimension heat map images will giving you the estimation of each of the parts and the next is the part affinity field which is giving you the direction so it will tell you like which two parts we can use to create a pair then we will do the post processing to find which of the parts and pairs we can combine to create a human skeleton so this is the whole architecture which started from the image and it will give you the skeleton so we know we have a network which is a vgg network it then further divided into two parts heat maps and paths then heat maps will go through nms which is non max suppression so next we will have the part candidates so we know that we will not get the single candidate for the each of the part so we will get multiple candidates for each of the part so we have to see like which of the give you the correct estimation so then we will do the post processing and in the last we will get the human skeleton 
so as we know like we are getting like 18 heat maps so these heat map will store the confidence for each of the parts so this is will give you the matrix same size as the input image so we will use this to extract the location of the different body parts out of these 18 different matrices so how we are training these we are using the mean square error so that we will able to predict the correct heat maps with the whatever the heat maps we have in the target output level second branch will give you the paths which is the part penalty field so it is the matrices that gives the information about the position and the orientation of the pairs so we know that pairs are the combination of the different parts so it will use to get the information about the which of the parts we can combine to get the pairs so it will give you the information about the x direction and the y direction so there are total 38 different type of paths which will get from this network output so this whole network is not a like single single stage network so it is have multiple stages so each stage will refine the whatever the output come from the previous stage so as we know like in the first stage we will get lot of different results so we will refine in the further stages so we will take the confidence map from the previous stage and we will pass to the next stage and the same thing we will do for the paths also so that's how we will refining our results but still after refination we will get not a single pixel value for each of the parts so we will get different type of candidates so you can think like for the neck we'll have 10 candidates so those candidate pixel value can be very much near to each other can be far away from each other so we have to see like which are actually representing that part of the body we know that we only get the heat maps to refining those heat maps to find the peaks we will use non-max suppression so non-max suppression is work very much similar to the max pooling that we are doing in CNN. What it will do, so it will take a sliding window of size 5 and it will find the maximum in that area. So it will replace that pixel with that maximum value. So after applying non-max suppression, we will have different candidates for each of the body part. So here you can see we have like 5 different points for the neck and 3 different points for the left shoulder. So we have to see like which is really representing which of the pair really represent that connection here that graph theory will help us. So here that path will help us to find which of the pair give you the correct estimation. So how we'll use the path so, so we have the direction in the x axis and y axis for each of the pairs and also we have the candidate different candidates. So we will use the line integral and find that which of the connection have the highest value. Uh, so we will create a weighted bipartite graph to make a table so that we will, when we will pass that table we will find which of the connection have the highest weightage. So we will get that highest weightage value and we will know that this pair having the strongest bond. We will use that pair and we will eliminate the others. In the last we will get the only the weighted bipartite graphs. So that is showing you the all possible connection between the candidates of the two different parts. With using the paths with the line integral, we will get the score for each of the connection between the different candidate of two parts. So now what we will do, we will sort that and we will sort that from maximum to minimum. Then we will apply a greedy approach, find the maximum for each of the pairs. Till last time we will get all the different pairs which can be used together to create the human skeleton. Next problem is like which pair will go with which human that we will do in the merging step. So first we will consider that each connection belongs to a different human. So now we have like same number of human as the whatever the connections we have. So in the merging we will see if both the pairs having one common vertices then we will consider them as a single joint for a single human. So that's how we are going from the same number of humans to the only exact number of human which are present in the image. So in the last we will get the skeleton for, for that human so which having all the different parts and the pairs which we have calculated from this whole process. So OpenPose having like very good implementation in both the OpenCV and they have their own implementation also. So most of the other papers which came after this paper have used more of the techniques which have used by this paper. So that's all for this video. We will discuss one another topic in the next video. So till then have a nice day and goodbye.